Ball joint, ball joint. How do you change ball joints? In all my years of doing car mechanics, and that's a long time, never had a ball joint removal tool. Never needed one. I just used a hammer and a chisel. My favorite method of repairing things. See? Chisel. BFH. But I'm doing some ball joints on this rust tundra. And where is it? There it is. And I need a ball joint removal tool, and the ball joints weren't that bad. The problem is the boots were torn. And you can't get boots, so you gotta change the ball joint. So it seems like a waste, but it's the way it goes. So you gotta press them out. I guess you could hammer them, but anyways, I rented or borrowed this tool from AutoZone. It's a $150 set. And you think it's easy, you gotta get the right tool on. This one goes on the ball joint stud or over it. it straddles it. And then you put that on. They've got two different sizes and you put a gizmo over here with a hole in it and you put a one with a no hole in it. And you tighten the heck out of it with this gun that I bought brand new for $250. This one didn't work. This one wasn't strong enough. What kind is it? It is a... can't read the label. I think it says made in Japan. Made in Japan. Anyways, I've got a blue point also. I buy these used. You take a chance. Oh, you're here to watch my video, <laughs> you hoodlum on a Honda. All right, let's crank this baby up and see what happens. See if we can get this ball joint out of the knuckle. There she blows. Right tool for the job. The hardest thing is holding all the, the pieces. Old boot, the old bottom of the boot. What bottom that's of the boot? The new, that's the new ball joint. No, that's the old one. That's the new ball joint. That's the old ball that's joint. That's the new one. That's the new one. And the ball joint's not that bad. Well, one, this one's, well, they're half worn. It's time to change. Yep. Now you got to put the spacers on in a different direction. The so one you on could... the other side was really worn down, huh? Uh, yeah. This was the one from the other side. Yeah, it was this is the one from the driver's side. Yeah. Not loose loose as in baby rattle loose and this one's a little better. But the boots are the biggest problem so I'm yeah. going to pause this for a second and but set up my tools again. Alright, ten minutes later of fumbling with all these little parts, I've got this lined up and the other one didn't go in square. I took it apart, put it back together, it still went in crooked. I just cranked her down and she corrected herself so let's crank this baby down with my plastic body the Ingersoll Rand. Ready? It's noisy. Not uh, locked onto here now. Now I gotta struggle with it. Give me a second. Straight. Alright. Got the thing off and let's try and crank her down again. quarter inch. Well, it only goes in a half an inch. That way for the compressor to build up some pressure I hear it running in the background. Might as well make a video of this. Cutting off this link. I got a new one. The other one was broken. The bushings are kind of shot. Buy another link? Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got a new one. You already got it. You no, know, it's funny on my you on my G5. Already, right? On my G5, the bottom and top are greasable. I can grease them. Yeah, they're right here. Those are greasable. No, on mine they are. It's in a different box. On mine they're greasable, but yours, what failed was the bushing. Yeah. And collapsed. It's just yeah. not worth taking it apart to save it. You just buy a new one for ten bucks, and you got a brand new one. All right, the compressor's got air. Let's see if we can crank this baby down. Do you need to hold the camera? Nope, not going anywhere. Sure? That way you can hold the clamp? Well, the good thing is it went, it's screwing down. It's actually going over you the top of the, the ball clamp joint. with your hand? No, I don't want to hold it with my hand. I have to reset the clamp, I think. 
Oh, struggle, struggle, struggle. I'm struggling here. Come on, baby. Come on. Almost done, another sixteenth of an inch. Titanium. Bought that brand new, $250. back up. I'm going to go in my office and grab the links. I'm going to change the links. I'm going to put the C-clip that retains this. It's a C-clip. And I put the boot on with its C-clip. Complicated. It's still a rusted piece of junk. Rusted. Brake lines. Rusted. God, this thing is miserable. Can't believe you bought this truck. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, the compressor's all fired up and powered up and filled up, and we'll try baby this, push this baby in. Come on, now. almost. I might have to reset it and get that last sixteenth of an inch right there under my gloved fingernail right there. I got the Lynx Ultra Power. Brand new Chinese junk. Made in China. Engineered for quality or and durability. Parts meter exceed OEM specifications. Direct replacement OEM fit precision made. Quality materials built to last. Ah! Yeah right. Junk. I gotta reset this. Got brake hoses here. Wagner, good American company. Printed in USA, made in Italy. What? Where's Italy? Never been there. Probably never going. Okay. I gotta reset this and put you down for a second. Don't go away. Okay, I got it reset, but I don't know if it's gonna land at home. I'm gonna flip it over. Go away, I got you looking at the gravel. Oh, I see that's pretty close. I think I got it. Yeah, it slipped over the edge. You gotta get the exact right size drivers, and I don't know if a kit exists that has every single size in the world. One more time. Oh. Digging into my nice worn out shoe. I think I need new shoes. I got holes in my shoes. It's funny, these Keens are made in China. I used to wear Walmart made in China shoes and they'd wear out in two or three months. They were just total junk. And then I went to a foot doctor because my arches fell <laughs> and it hurts. Not a joke, getting old. And the doctor or the chiropractor said, why don't you buy some Keen shoes and get some inserts made. We're talking feet here. We had these inserts made for $250 or $300, and they've held up really well. I had some other ones from a previous company, and they broke in half. So take out the factory insert, put this insert in for whatever it was, $200, $300. And these shoes, I have worn them out like a mailman. And they've held up, made in China. But Keen shoes from Keen, Oregon? But made in China, but they're much better quality. Some of the Chinese stuff is good, like the files, and some of it is total junk. Made in USA. Some of it's good and you never know. This obviously is made in China. I think I got it. I'm right into the uh, to the seat. Yep, we're in. It's quite the ordeal, but we're done. Now I gotta change that sway bar link. I ordered a boot for the rack and pinion. I'm gonna leave the lower ball joint. I gotta put the Oh, the axle, uh, where's that? That's over here, behind the Cadillac. Cadillac, look how long this thing is. Whee! I gotta get a new inner boot for the Cadillac, it's in the mail. Checks in the mail, so is the boot. 
So I've got to get a new boot. I've got some more parts. Maybe those are the brake hoses for the Toyota. Oh. Maybe these are the brake hoses for the Toyota. Did I mark them? Made in China. Yep, no one can compete with China. Light bulb, H4 is it? 9003. Standard original equipment quality. Made in Pologne. Polonia. So you're not going to watch too much more here. I'm going to put the C clips on, put the boots on, and clean up all the mess. Then I got to work on the blazer. Sold. I got to fix the carburetor. Hey, I got a question for you if you've watched the video this long. Tell me what this is exactly, this clicky switch here. Brrr. I talked to a carburetor rebuilder at Saratoga Springs, but he wants $175 to fix it. Whatever's wrong, he'll fix. But the carburetor's fine, but it runs rich at idle. Just a little rich, not belching black smoke, just a little rich. And he said, well, maybe that switch isn't controlling the accelerator pump. I said, accelerator pump's over on this side, right there. So what does this thing do, this California emissions carburetor switch? I've seen it on other GMs in the early 80s. I haven't looked inside to see if it's running rich, but someone said the well plugs could be leaking that they use to drill the carburetor, then they block it. But somebody else, I watched a video from Who Said Tyler, I think, or Questioning 3. Uh, no, Who Said Tyler, maybe, I forget. Anyways, he said that the well plugs almost never leak. So that's my question. What does this do? And could that cause a rich idle? How do you fix it if it is? Do you get a new switch? I don't even know what it's called. I looked up some videos on YouTube, Rich Running Quadrajet. Uh, way too many videos. All right. I'm going to close up this, put all the parts away, and celebrate the Sabbath.